morning. My name is Tracy Zeckhausen, and I would like to welcome you to worship at Newman Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter where you are geographically, you're welcome to worship here. And we are so glad that you are joining us today for worship. To those in the sanctuary, a couple of quick reminders. If you did not bring anything for communion with you this morning, you will find crackers and juice at each of the entries to the sanctuary. Please feel free to help yourself. If you have prayer requests you'd like to share, you may fill out one of the prayer cards and drop them in the offering plates at each of the entrances along with your offering as you are on your way out of worship today. For those of you worshiping online this morning, I invite you to share a greeting in the comments to let us know you are here and to welcome others who are worshiping online alongside you. Continue to use that platform throughout our time together as a brave space to share your prayer requests, ask any questions you may have about our faith community, as well as simply be in fellowship with one another. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our electronic communications at newmanucc.org forward slash connect. For those worshiping online, as we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of communion, feel free to have something nearby that symbolizes for you the bread and the cup which Jesus shared. Prayer requests may be shared in the chat option online or on our website at newmanucc.org forward slash prayers. And you may also share your offerings there as well as at newmanucc.org forward slash give. We are blessed today to have the Reverend Helen Bodell leading worship while Path Pastor Timoth is away on vacation. Thank you, Helen. And Kate Wilcox has an announcement from the Faith Formation team she would like to share. Kate. Good morning. I'm Kate Wilcox from the Faith Formation team, and we just wanted to formally, <coughs> excuse me, invite everybody um, from all households of any size to our pizza party on Thursday, July 28th at 6:30. So we're going to do a craft of painting flower pots for a pizza garden, a collection of herbs that you can use all year round, and there's going to be some pizza because who doesn't like pizza, right? A night you don't have to cook. That's even better, right? So to give us an idea of who might be, you know, like how much pizza and the RSVPs, please email Christy at newmanucc.ce at gmail.com or call the church office and let them know. Um, in your RSVP, please let us know if there's any food intolerances so we can, or your favorite pizza toppings so we can have an idea of what and how many pizzas to order. Um, Starting next week, there should be a clipboard at the entrances so Christy can get a more idea if you don't want to email and that's easier for you. If you have any questions, let anybody from Faith Formation know. Thank you. With that, let us now go a bit deeper into our worship experience by joining responsively with Bev in our call to worship. Good morning. Please join me as we begin our worship with the call to worship read responsively. Come, let us quiet our anxious hearts and sit with Jesus. Jesus, who invites us to the one thing that is needful. Jesus, who invites us to simply be. May we be still and know that God is in our midst. Let us now join together in a prayer of confession that we may open ever more space for God to enter in and transform our lives. Let us join together. Holy One, you know our distractions and our anxieties, and you invite us to something more, not the more of our busyness, nor more of the stuff that crowds our lives but to more of you and to who you call us to be. 
Help us to trust that you do not ask us to prove our worth. Help us to trust that you seek us as we are right now. Help us to know that the dishes can wait. Forgive us our distractions, our righteous anger, our focus on what others should be doing, and lead us back to you to, to listen, to reconnect, to know that you are God. Amen. Gracious God, you have given us the gift of your only Son, Jesus, loving us in our humanness, knowing us in our limitations and in our overactive thoughts. We know from your ministry that we are not disqualified from your love or your forgiveness because we are human. We are your beloved children. You only ask that we turn again and again to your loving care. We thank you for loving Martha in us and inviting her and us to join Mary at your feet to quiet our hearts and continue the awesome journey of discipleship, learning from every turn in this miraculous gift of life. Amen. Let us turn now to uh, hymn number 172 in the Black New Century Hymnal, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. Here in this morning's reading, may God's blessing be added to our hearing, understanding, 
and living by this lesson. Thank you, Ben. May the words of my heart and the meditations of all of our hearts be blessed by you, O oh God. Amen. I invite us to begin this time in quiet and rest. If you are comfortable doing so, please feel free to close your eyes or not. Let us take a deep breath, a refreshing pause, joining our hearts and minds in a moment of silence. Well, I know I appreciate that. <laughs> I am Helen Bodell, a member here at Newman Congregational UCC and a full-time chaplain at Women and Infants Hospital. I welcome those of you who have been here for many years and those of you who have walked in for the first time this morning, including baby Penelope, born at Women and Infants. <laughs> As of Friday, Timoth is on vacation for two weeks, hopefully resting and enjoying family, taking a Sabbath rest to support his ministries with us and in the wider community, and we wish him well. And though we are not on a lake in Maine, we too are invited to a rest of sorts today as we reflect on our scripture reading that Bev has just shared with us. It is familiar. Two sisters, Mary and Martha, friends of Jesus, welcoming him for a meal. The story, in fact, is so familiar, it can be tempting to gloss right over it. But it has much to offer us if we offer it our deep attention and care. This story follows numerous stories in Luke's gospel in which Jesus is radically challenging the, st the status quo. The feeding of the 5,000, the Good Samaritan, to name a few. These stories show Jesus upending religious and social norms of who is in and who is out, who is clean and who is unclean, and what it means to be his disciple. These stories unfold as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem with increasing urgency as Jesus is teaching and preparing his disciples. Jesus arrives at his friend's home in need of rest from radical work on behalf of the kingdom, in need of a haven from the crowds, from projections to him, upon him, misunderstandings, threats of violence. Jesus comes in need of rest seeking hospitality from Mary and Martha. Martha welcomes him, and she gets right to work, appropriately for the culture and the time, providing for Jesus' needs. Soon enough, though, Martha becomes upset. She is doing all of the work, and Mary is slacking off. Understandably indignant, at least in my mind, she asks Jesus to back her up, to get her sister to help her out in the kitchen. We know the story. Jesus enters into the intimate world of these sisters and challenges Martha in ways that may seem grating to our contemporary ears. But Jesus seeks not the traditional hospitality and generosity that Martha is offering, or at least not only that, but a different kind of hospitality one that involves mutuality of the kind that Mary and Jesus are sharing in this scripture. On the cover of the bulletin today is a message that I sent out to the women and infants community. Each week I send out a caring for the caregiver message, at least I've been doing this during the pandemic. This quote is taken from a series of prayers that Phyllis Cole Dye wrote, uh, one for each year of her 59 years at that time, and I've just chosen three of her prayers. 
For those of you who are online, I will read that to you. May we befriend the sounds of silence. May we gift one another with radical attention. May we listen to one another as if lives depend upon it. May we speak as if our voice will be the last sound ever heard. It is a tall order, just as Jesus' message to Martha is deeply challenging. And although this message that I sent out to women and infants, it is not explicitly religious, which is appropriate for the diverse community there, and everywhere for that matter, it seems to me very in tune with this visit of Jesus with Mary and Martha. It speaks to the heart of hospitality that is not just taking care of, but also receiving of one another. This hospitality is a give and take, a sharing of power, an honoring of diversity of culture, diversity of lived experience, of human vulnerability, building trust where the stakes are life and death. In this story, we find Martha welcoming Jesus and caring for him. And this is also what we seek to do in a hospital setting at Women and Infants where I work. There is much to be done, often urgently, with the greatest amount of skill that the care team can provide. In fact, I want Martha to be on duty when I arrive at the emergency department, that's for sure. But I also pray that Martha comes with Mary's spirit of presence and care. There is need for the radical attention of Mary that Jesus receives and praises. Listening as if lives depend on it, for they do. Speaking as if our voices will be the last sound ever heard, for sometimes it will be. I think it's a pretty good description of the one thing that is needful, this prayer. This is what Jesus is trying to convey to Martha, who is having some trouble taking it in. And I relate. It's tough to hear challenging words when you're trying your best, perhaps working up a sweat in the meantime. It can often just sound like criticism. But there is urgency here. Jesus is on the way to the cross. He seeks a quality of hospitality that more fully receives him and connects at the level of heart and soul. This urgency calls not primarily for hurried action, but for deep presence and attention that goes both ways. Here at Newman, we share both in the outward work of the kingdom with God's help, learning together, naming injustice, working toward a more just and equitable world. Some examples are our recent racial equity scholarship, the Bread of Life food pantry together with our neighbors, One Egg, One Egg Haiti, and other important ministries that care for our world in such need. Our Newman community also shares in ministries of presence that are very dear to me through prayer blankets, prayer shawls, heart pillows, blessing rocks, hats for babies, hats for women in treatment for cancer. These are gifts of radical presence in their creation, in their gifting, and in the way that they accompany those at the hospital those separated from loved ones, perhaps moms on bed rest for weeks or even months with a young child at home who cannot come in, each of them with a soft blanket, perhaps that matches, that they talk over the phone or video chat, connected in a quite miraculous way. Blankets for newborns, blankets for newborns who leave this life much too soon, for adults and in more circumstances than I can name here. The power of such gifts is so deep, profound, and intimate, 
it is a great privilege for me and for my colleagues to witness. And I think it is for us as a community to share in this beautiful ministry. And I often wish you could all be flies on the wall to see and hear, but I think you know. Um, and please use your imagination for what, the, what these gifts can mean. Committing to active outward work of caring for the needs we witness in the world with the inner attention of prayer, listening as if lives depend on it, is discipleship in action. It is a dynamic gift, give and take in the world and in our own hearts and back out again over and over again. As I was coming in this morning, I met Jeff's son, Stephen, and I saw his wonderful tattoo of his spirit animal. And I shared that just, just before coming in, I thought of um, our own dog, um, who is like Mary, like Martha, anxious about many things. And I too was anxious about getting here on time. <laughs> never my strong suit. And um, that was when Fern decided that she would lay down in the sun, put her hound nose up into the sun, quivering, taking in all of these messages that we without that exquisite hound nose are oblivious to. And she just went into this blissful state. <laughs> I hauled her inside, but um, <laughs> but I did connect and appreciate that moment. Um, so we we receive these opportunities in so many ways. So this passage in its domestic setting, the familiarity of simmering resentments and cries of it's not fair between siblings or other family members, makes it tempting to arrive either at a too neat lesson. We should be more faithful and contemplative like Mary, or to make a too quick judgment. Martha is getting a bad rap. Jesus is really missing the mark on this one. Three plus years into the pandemic, this time of racial reckoning, with the polarization, the anger, the fear, and the exhaustion and overwhelm. And Jeff, you met me with that this morning. Oh my goodness, you know, what is happening in this world? Many of us can indeed, and should indeed, sympathize with Martha. It is easy to hear inequity in this story and to be disturbed that Martha is carrying too heavy a load by herself. So it is important to situate this story in its historical context so we can appreciate what is actually radical inclusion at work here. First, Jesus accepts the hospitality of two single women. This is Martha's house. There is no concern with whether there is a male head of household or brother or uncle to greet Jesus when he comes to the door. And then Mary does not hesitate to sit at Jesus' feet, the place of a full disciple, and Jesus gives her his full blessing. A change is happening here. Jesus shows he doesn't tell, at least not at first. He treats Martha as fully equal to any man of the time, accepting her welcome without question, and then welcomes Mary sitting at his feet, only elaborating upon this discipleship when challenged by Martha. Jesus is not excluding Martha from the better part that Mary has chosen. Rather, he is inviting her to recognize this better part, to choose the one thing that is needful and to live into its abundance. There is life-giving mutuality in this invitation. Is there a better, more pithy story of scripture for this time that we're living in, in our homes, in our churches, schools, hospitals, corporations, and communities. We are reckoning with racial inequity. We are seeing more and more acts of violence against those in the LGBTQ plus community and those who are vulnerable, children, people shopping, 
people, in fact, at worship. We are seeing historic, we're coming to know historic and all too current realities of exclusion. We are called to attend to the realities of racism that are so deeply embedded in our society. Realities of discrimination of those who are othered. These realities that are so deeply embedded, especially those of systemic racism, that we often miss them or gloss over them, perpetuating harms. In this interaction with Martha, Jesus speaks directly with Martha, his dear friend, who brings to Jesus her honest and raw questions. This is the same Martha who cried out to Jesus about Lazarus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha, who then witnessed Jesus not only weeping, but then raising Lazarus from the dead. Martha, who identifies Jesus as the Messiah, witnessing to his divinity as well as his humanity. Demonstrating deep and trusting friendship, Martha brings her true feelings to Jesus. Demonstrating equity and full inclusion, Jesus calls Martha to a deeper sense of herself as one who is invited, as well as Mary, to sit at his feet, to be his disciple, a full and equal partner. Jesus' challenging words are the words of a mentor and teacher to his disciple. That is how Jesus sees Martha and Mary, and he is inviting Martha to this new understanding. He invites Martha to recognize, as Mar Mary is doing, that she is not limited by social convention of this time. Martha and we are invited to discipleship, and this calls for our deep attention and our reverence. Many of you know that my husband Charlie and I have a daughter named Martha. I respect this honest disciple, who is also Jesus' dear friend. She is honest. She is gutsy. She makes herself vulnerable with Jesus, and he loves her. This story is not an embarrassing comeuppance for Martha, as it might seem upon first reading. It is an important pause and a challenge, an invitation to the very core of Martha's being to come to know herself, for us to come to know ourselves as Jesus knows Martha and Jesus knows us. Jesus longs for this and for Martha and for us to live into the abundance of life for which he has come and to which we are invited, every bit of us and all of us. And we, of course, long for this too. Let us pause here again to invite our own questions of Jesus. What do you ask of me, of us? What difficult truth do you need me to hear, Jesus? What is the one thing that is needful in this world, in our lives, that clamor for our attention? We are worried and distracted by many things, but one thing is needful. May we listen to one another and to our deepest self where God lives, listening as if lives depend on it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join now in hymn number 451, Be Thou My Vision.
pausing to reflect on the God-given gifts we receive and the gifts our human community shares in our community and the world. May those of us here in our meeting house and those joining online take a moment as you are able and as you are moved to consider an offering to the ministries of Newman Church. You may give on the Newman website, write a check, leave your offering as you go out from this time, or simply offer a moment of thanksgiving. We are grateful for the spirit of generosity of this community that allows us to share the love of God with one another and with the world. And now a prayer of dedication for those gifts that we offer. God of giving and receiving, of action and contemplation, of service and renewal, we ask your blessing upon our gifts, freely given, and upon the welling up of gratitude that inspires giving. We thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who guides us in our ministries, who models what it is to love and serve you, both in action and in rest, inspiring us and renewing us for the joys and the deep challenges of this life. We offer these gifts in a spirit of gratitude. Amen. to our communion table. I invite you to turn to the ordinary ingredients of the extraordinary Eucharistic meal we will share together. Now is the time for those of you who are online and for all of us who are here to gather whatever it may be. And if you do not have something, please know in the back of the church there are crackers and juice. Crackers and juice, bread and wine, a scone and water, <laughs> whatever you have before you. That it and we may be nourished in this meal, given to us, blessed as sacred by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At this table, where all are welcome, may we find rest. At this table, may we find hope. At this table, may we be restored and made whole again. On the night that Jesus knew would be his last with them, Jesus gathered his disciples for a feast. As in his time with Martha and Mary, he invited his disciples into intimate communion to join him just as they were in their humanness, their blindness to what would come, their fear and their defensiveness. No one was turned away. That is true for us today. No one and no part of us is turned away. Jesus asked and asks of us only that we, his disciples, commune with him, join him, attend to his words, his teachings, his presence, and to this sacred meal. We are invited now and throughout our lives to reorient ourselves to Jesus in this ritual of remembering, this meal of belonging, this source of abundant life. We are asked to pause and be with and join Jesus. After dinner was over, before anyone had cleared the table or cleaned up, Jesus paused. He turned to his disciples, inviting them to attune their hearts, to attend to his presence in their midst. Jesus enacted a ritual that would foreshadow his death and his resurrection, a ritual that nurtures us in our journey of faith. Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. Sharing it with them, saying, take, eat. 
do this in remembrance of me. He also took the cup, blessed it, saying, take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. And so we pray, asking to be nourished in this time as the busy world hums on, calling for our care. But first, we pause at Jesus' feet, receiving these gifts of Jesus' life, of his teaching, of his dying, and his rising to new life. This is the body of Christ, the bread of life. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of blessing. Let us drink. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. May this meal, the bread of life and cup of salvation, nourish us and send us out to serve. Amen.
to give thanks for the beautiful music shared by Becky and by Jeff and by all of you who sang this morning. We have one more hymn. So for those of you who are comfortable, we are online. Uh, if you uh, would like to share a prayer aloud, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, we do have other ways to share our prayers, whether by going to the Newman website or as you've come in to write down your prayers. Yes, Ryan. Absolutely. I'm very sorry to hear that. Prayers for Dave. This is an energetic and dynamic and committed man. Prayers. Yeah. Thanks. Prayers for Sally and for you. for Dave, prayers for Sally, for Quentin, for Ron. Well, let us pray, joining our hearts. O oh Lord, for all that has spoken for each of these precious people in our community and those with whom our lives are woven together, we pray for Dave for his recovery, for his doctors and nurses attending to him, for his family, and for his dear friend, Ryan, and for all that he brings to this community. We pray for Sally and for her sister. May you give to Sally strength for this journey, and may this treatment offer her healing on this way that she is on. We give you our prayers, O oh Lord, for Quentin with this new diagnosis and also for Ron and for all the prayers that Bev has lifted. We thank you, Lord, for all those who have joined together this morning to make this service possible for sharing our hearts, our presence with one another. Its importance cannot be understated for the gift that we have been called to step aside, to be in this place, to be together with this community online. We do pray for Timoth in his time of Sabbath rest and we ask that you give to each person here, each person online joining us, those moments of rest. May you speak to us, O oh Lord. May you help us to turn away from our anxieties and our busyness, that we may hear your voice calling to us, nurturing us, and only then sending us back out again. We pray all this and all that is unsaid on our hearts as we join together in the prayer that your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn, When Peace Like a River, New Century Hymnal number 438. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.